For me, what would be fascinating is to explore how you can apply comp technology to financial services. And I was wondering if you have some examples that are, uh, Alexa could be one, I guess. Yeah, Alexa, what's my bank, uh, my bank balance? Well, there's a lot of different services that I use now because, you know, I started with, I won't name names, but there are a lot of online investing services that you sign up and the interface is ugly and you can't get to your trades. And so I, I'm the type of person where I'm like, I'll listen to Marketplace at 11 p.m. before I go to bed and then think about what I'm going to do. I missed all, all these opportunities because I had to go to the desktop. I'm like, well, there's a phone right here. So I ended up just choosing Robinhood because you type in your pin code and then you're doing something. And you know, it's frictionless to do it. It's the least amount of steps to get to the goal. It's, uh, it's transparent. You know what trade went through. There's a trading history of everything. But it's, it's fun to look at instead of the other interfaces where everything's this horrible table layout and I have like 50 options. You know, there, there has to be some stepping stools to get people that aren't into trading into trading. Other, are there things the, the, the industry is missing in terms of how you could do that, make payments? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's opportunities for legal automation, fractional ownership, fractional investing, you know, some of that like transparency and tracking so that you know, you're immediately, when you buy something, you get all the data at the same time. So like if I buy a house, I want all of the documents delivered in their own portal, and I want that transferred over to me. So can I embed that into the transaction? And it's all categorized and organized. One of the biggest issues for security is that every single company has to not only provide their core service, but security. So how do you switch that model where your personal data is with you and so it's much less likely to be hacked unless you're like near somebody. And then even then, the, the data is kind of useless because you know somebody's using it as, uh, away from you. So one of your theses was machines shouldn't be like humans and humans shouldn't be like, like machines. And yet with a lot of AI and robotics, we're going in the way of, of trying to replicate with machines what, what humans normally do. Yeah, this, this is slightly dystopic, but the idea is that if you have the robo-advisor do some of the work, but you have people checking that and kind of looking at that, they're going to be working just a little bit less, or people can say, okay, I've got some money in here, and I have some money with a real human being. I think it's, it's just trying to find the right mix. So there's still kind of this runaway idea that if you do everything based on machine learning and AI, you can make tremendous gains, but you can also miss out. So how do we have automation that still has human culture with it? How do we bring that back? Or how do we bring that so that people have a rewarding work and they don't just get tired, you know? And it always is some really funny thing. It's never that tech isn't ready for us. It's usually that humans aren't ready for technology. You can do whatever you want, but if you don't understand people, how are you going to make good technology for them? <laughs>